What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh video and this is a very exciting video for me because it lets me introduce one of my favorite formats in the game's history and that may sound wild for people who know what format I'm talking about but I'll explain my thoughts later in this video and also in the video that I do on the format because we've been covering Chimera Tech format for quite some time. I think that's a great format. It's the format held in January 2007 at the SJC Orlando of that year, and it's a really balanced format. There's a lot of different decks that are competing for the top spot in the metagame, and I think it's really fun. I think it's, you know, if you want a good GX era format that feels like GX and is not too broken, definitely play that. But the format immediately after Chimera Tech format is a format known as Airblade, which you know, looking at just the card pool, it's not really that different. There's only a couple of new cards added into the card pool from some Duelist packs like Duelist Pack Jay Nuki and Duelist Pack Actor Phoenix. Uh, and also there's some prize cards that are potentially in the mix, but I'll get to that in a second. The ban list is also the same as the one that Chimera Tech format uses. The September 2006 ban list with the additional hit to Cyberstein that happened in December of 2006. So you'd think on paper that this format would not be that different from Chimera Tech format. However, the new cards added greatly changed the format a lot into a tier zero format. I mean, there's some debate, I guess, over whether it's actually tier zero. Maybe upon modern re-exploration, people will figure out that it's not. But looking at the deck and playing the deck that is the sort of tier zero deck, uh, it's very clear to me that this format is tier zero because that deck is just insane. And that's why I love this format. I think it's very, very fun to just combo off with that deck and go crazy with it. Now, do I think that makes for a healthy format for competitive play? No. And that's why on the YGR from Zero Discord server, where we hold monthly tournaments, we actually will be skipping Airblade. We're not going to feature a monthly tournament for it. We will have a locals for it way down the line once we get there in the locals timeline. Uh, but that will be when we get to that. But uh, I think this format is a lot of fun to play just for fun. And uh, let me explain the sort of new cards added to the card pool to explain why I think you know, this format's so crazy, and also what I think the format looks like in terms of the metagame. So firstly, uh, you know, the big new introductions are, you know, listed up here in this deck list here, but I want to address a point of contention among different people who play Retro Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, and that is Crush Card Virus. Now, Crush Card Virus, at this time, because Airblade took place at the February uh, SJC St. Louis in 2007, this time, Crush Card Virus had only been released as a prize card, and also there was one copy that had been, like, leaked at a sneak peek event, um, and so, you know, you can argue about whether that's debatably playable or not, but either way, uh, there were four copies distributed at, at an event, and then that one additional copy that may or may not be out there. Uh, so that's five copies of Crush Card Virus total that are in circulation that we know of. If anyone can figure out if there was a sixth or something like that, definitely let me know. But given that there are only five, it does make it a bit tricky to say whether Crush Card Virus is legal or not. Because, you know, someone could potentially, if they spent a lot of money on Yu-Gi-Oh!, they could potentially have gotten a playset of Crush Card Virus at that time, right? They could have uh, paid off the other um, people who won the prize cards and bought a whole playset of them. However, two people could not have had a playset of them because there are only five in existence. So that then leads to a weird sort of situation surrounding crush card like do you allow it to be played at three copies because someone could have it because then you wind up in game states that could not have physically actually happened in the tournaments uh and so it's it's a bit of a weird thing do you semi-limit it but like then that sort of gets into weird territory as well so we have decided to not play with crush card virus legal in airblade format in following formats even though it is still like a prize card and stuff as the sort of availability of Crush Card increases, uh, it does become more feasible for multiple people to have play sets, and so we will allow it there. But I do think in Airblade format, we are going to not play with it at three copies, or any copies. So this card is not legal for competitive play in Airblade, on the YGO from Zero Discord server at least. I know that other Discord servers and other retro communities view that differently. Uh, so definitely, if you are playing Airblade in a retro community, check whether they allow Crush Card virus or not. I do think, controversial opinion, Crush Card Virus isn't necessarily even the best card in this format, and I'm not even sure the top tier zero deck would play it, because honestly, it doesn't really hit um, the other decks that hard, or at least as hard as you'd think it would. So, you know, I'm not really sold on Crush Card Virus as being a competitive staple anyways, and also I think just for the reasons that I've outlined, it should not be legal in the format at all. So I just wanted to bring that up. 
um, because it is something that you can run into in other servers. But now that I've discussed the sort of elephant in the room with that, let's discuss the new cards and what makes this format so broken. So the biggest new card and one of the things that gives the format its name is Elemental Hero Stratos, which was known as Elemental Hero Airman in the OCG. And that's where the air part of Airblade comes from. I'll get to the blade part when we discuss what the tier zero deck list looks like. But this is a very, very good Elemental Hero, probably the best Elemental Hero monster released up to this point. This is a Warrior 1800 attack, 300 defense. It says, when this card normal or special summon, you can activate one of these effects. Either destroy smaller trap cards on the field up to the number of hero monsters you control, except this card, or add one hero monster from your deck to your hand. Now, an important thing to note is that this second effect just says a hero monster, not just elemental heroes. And that can be very important, especially when you have this new Destiny hero that came out in Duel of Pass Actors Phoenix. This is Destiny Hero Malicious. This is a 800 attack, 800 defense point. Warrior Monster, level 6, said you can banish this card from your graveyard to spell summon one Destiny Hero Malicious from your deck. Seems like an innocent enough effect, but where it becomes really broken is when you also combine it with another card released in Duel's Pack, Astro Phoenix, Destiny Draw, which is a normal spell that says discard one Destiny Hero card, draw two cards. So basically the main combo of this deck, or one of them, is you activate Elemental Hero Stratos, search out a uh, Destiny Hero Malicious, pitch it off of D-Draw, draw two cards, banish a Malicious from Graveyard, get out another Malicious from your deck, and then pop off from there. And you may be wondering, like, how do you actually pop off from there? But we'll get to that when we cover the topping deck list of this time. In addition, there's also Magical Stone Excavation, which was released recently in this format. And there's a powerful spell so that discard two cards, then target one spell card in your graveyard, add it to your hand, which also allows you to combo off with the Tier 0 decklist. And again, I've been kind of coy about that, uh, but I want to cover all the new cards introduced in this format before getting to the top decklist. But I will discuss how all these things relate into a huge, powerful meta threat that dominated this SJC. But we'll get to that when we get to that. First, I want to mention the other cards here because while a lot of them are sort of just pack filler, anime style garbage, uh, there are some actually notable cards introduced in the Duels packs and other sources as well. Uh, for instance, Card Trooper. Card Trooper came out in Duels pack Jade and Yuki. This is a level 3 machine monster, 400 attack, 400 defense. It says once per turn, you can choose a number from 1 to 3, then send that many cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. This card gains 500 attack for each card sent to the graveyard this way until the end of this turn. If this card you control is destroyed and sent to your graveyard, draw one card. That's a very, very good card. Uh, you know, it mills cards into your graveyard to set up your graveyard for later plays. It also is a 1900 beater when you need it to be. It also draws you a card when destroyed, so that's very nice as well. And it's a machine with 500 less attack, which means that you can machine duplication this card, bring out two more from deck, and, you know, assemble what's known as the troop dupe scoop combo in later formats of the game's history. In this format, I think that combo is a little bit too slow. I could potentially see people, upon revisiting this uh, sort of top deck list, potentially adding Card Trooper to it because it does mill for you, and that's kind of what that deck likes to be doing. But I do think that in this format, probably won't see like too much play because generally you want your normal zone to be something like Stratos as opposed to Trooper. But Trooper is a very, very good card and will pop up in a lot of later formats as well. So I figured it was notable to point out here. In addition, Burial from a uh, Different Dimension here came out. It's a quick play spell. It says target up to three banished monsters and return them to the graveyard. At this point in time, I don't think it is the best card in the world. It can have some applications in this format, uh, especially if you're in a mirror match between the best deck in the room, which is Airblade. Uh, and you return your opponent's banished monsters to the graveyard before going for a dimension fusion play, which I promise this will make sense once we dive into the topping deck. Uh, that can come up to potentially insulate your OTKs, but I think it's kind of just too cute. I don't really think it's necessary in that deck, and so I don't really think this is that good of a card right now. Uh, maybe later in the game's history, it will be better. In, I, I say maybe, but I know it gets better later in the game's history, but in this format, I don't really think it's that good. But now moving on from the, you know, pretty decent, but probably not that good in this format cards to just the pretty bad cards. Firstly, we've got D-Counter. This is a normal trap. It says, when a face-up Destiny Hero monster controls target for an attack, destroy the attacking monster. So it's kind of just like Sakuratsu Armor, um, except worse because it's very specific. So this card would never really see much play. Eternal Dread is a normal trap that says, place two clock counters on each clock tower prison. So this can help you out if you've got clock tower prison up and you're trying to get to Dreadmaster or you're just trying to get to the condition where you can't take battle damage. This can help with that, but I think those sorts of stall decks are not really that good. And also I think that like Dreadmaster is not really that good either. So I don't really think this card will see much play. Next up, we got Over Destiny, a normal spell that says, target one Destiny Hero monster in your graveyard. Special summon one Destiny Hero monster from your deck whose level is less than you're equal to half of that target's level, but destroy it during the end phase of this turn. So I, I, that's kind of neat. If you're if you got Dasher in grave, I guess you can bring out a level three or lower 
Um, Destiny Hero, same with like Malicious, but uh, a lot of the really, really weak Destiny Heroes are not really that good. And also if they're being destroyed in the end phase, it's not really the best. So I don't really think this card is that good. Uh, next up for the Elemental Hero support, we've got Edge Hammer, the day normal trap. It's a tribute one Elemental Hero Blade Edge to target one monster your opponent controls, to destroy that target, and inflict damage to your opponent equal to that target's original attack. So this is kind of cool. It's kind of like Ring Destruction at home, uh, but it just requires too many hoops to jump through to actually make it worth it, in my opinion. Next up, we have Light Laser, an equip spell that says equip only to a Light Warrior type monster. Remove from play any monster that battles with it at the end of the damage step. And that last bit of text is really what kills this card, because if it was at the beginning of the damage step, maybe there'd be something there. But at the end of the damage step, it's like the battle already happened. So, you know, it's not really the most effective removal tool here. And also it's very specific on a Light Warrior as well. And next up, we got Kid Guard. The normal trap says, when an opponent's monster declared an attack, tribute one hero kid and negate the attack, then add one elemental hero monster from your deck to your hand. So, you know, that can sort of help you replenish your elemental heroes. But you need to be playing hero kids, which are pretty bad, in order to make use of it. And it's just a bit too, like, low power for the amount of hoops it requires you to jump through and the benefit it gives you. Uh, lastly, Happy Lover also came out in one of the champion packs. It's a normal monster that's a classic from the anime, but doesn't really see much play for good reason. Now that I've covered all the new cards that came out, let me show you how the uh, Destiny draw, Destiny Hero Malicious, and Strouch came together into a tier 0 meta threat. What you see in front of you is the winning decklist from SJC St. Louis, piloted by Carlo Perez, and I think built by Carlo Perez as well. Uh, and this is a really, really good deck. It's called Airblade. Basically, uh, you're using your Elemental Hero Strategies to search out your hero monsters, especially Maliciouses and Dashers, pitching them for D-Draw, drawing deeper in your deck, using the Maliciouses to bring out additional monsters to then monster gate away. And you've also got Reasoning to bring out these monsters from your deck. You're playing Jinzo and Demok to go into off Reasoning or monster gate. And oftentimes, if you've searched through your deck a lot, you can potentially guarantee that you hit a Demok or a Jinzo off of a Monster Gate here. Um, but the key to what makes this deck tick and be more than just a Reason Gate Turbo deck is that you've also got Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. Divine Sword Phoenix Blade is an equip spell that came out in one of the earlier structure decks in a Warrior structure deck. And uh, this card is, it seems not that good, but it actually is really busted. And... It basically said, equip only to a warrior monster gains through an attack during your main phase. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish two warrior monsters from your graveyard, add this card to your hand. And basically, uh, what this means is that if you get this thing into the graveyard, either milling off of, like, Monster Gate or Reasoning, or just pitching to the variety of discard cards you have in the deck, like Lightning Vortex or Magical Stone Excavation, uh, then you can banish the warriors that you have in grave to bring it back to hand, to then provide more discard fodder and things like that. But also, more importantly, to fuel something like Dimension Fusion to allow you to bring out all the warrior monsters that you've banished. And that can lead to some pretty sick ODK lines. Also, you can make use of the uh, first effect of Stratos. Instead of searching a hero, you can actually pop your opponent's back row. So if you do make a big play with this, you can actually bring out these guys, pop your opponent's entire back row, uh, potentially set up for like a Lightning Vortex or something to wipe away their board, and then get in for lethal damage in a major OTK. This deck is so, so cool. I like it a lot. I think it's just such a cool deck to be playing these cards like Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, which hadn't really seen much experimentation before then, uh, and combining with the new hero support and just completely breaking the game. This deck is super, super cool. I'm going to be showing off some replays of games with this deck in the next video, and hopefully that will show the power level of this deck if you can't just see it uh, from what you see on screen here. And, you know, to be fair, I think it is very hard to actually see how powerful this deck can be by just looking at the deck list. Once you play the deck, once you actually see it in action, uh, you realize how busted this thing can be. Also, you know, I want to mention Diamond Dude's in this deck as well. Uh, so this is sort of the next evolution of Diamond Dude Turbo, where that was a previous deck where you could, like, mill spells that could be pretty decent, like Death Croaking or something, and blow up your opponent's board. But in this deck, there's so many powerful spells that just are completely killer if you hit them. Hitting a D-Draw means that you don't have to pitch a Destiny Hero to draw two cards, so it's just basically milling Pot of Greed. Dimension Fusion, you don't have to pay the life point cost if you mill it off uh, Diamond Dude, which is really, really good, and can come up in a variety of different situations. Uh, Vortex, you don't have to pitch a card as well. You don't have to pitch a card for uh, Magical Stone Excavation as well, although I'm not actually sure if you can actually use this card off Diamond Dude, because uh, the targeting, the spell, is in the cost. So you may not actually be able to use Magical Stone off this, which might explain why the Magical Stone is only at one copy here, as opposed to at more than that. But this deck is just so, so cool. I like it a lot. 
Uh, again, you know, I don't think this format is that good competitively, but if you just want a fun time jamming a bunch of monsters on the field and doing crazy combos, this deck is the one for you. And that being said, I think there are some potential changes that can be made to this in the future, uh, because I feel like most people are going to be on decks like this uh, if you play games in the format, and having things like Wobokus potentially in the main deck could be good. Uh, just because, you know, you have the read that everyone's going to be on it in the metagame. And Waboku is one of the few ways to stop this deck from actually popping off and killing you. So, I like this deck a lot. I think it's really cool. And uh, I will be showing off some games with it in the next video that we got here. But let me know your thoughts on Airblade down in the comments below. What do you want to see out of this format? I'm right now only planning on featuring this one deck because it is so, so overpowering. But if people want me to feature more things, I can try. Uh, it's just there aren't really any new decks that arose from the other card introduced into this format. And this deck is just so, so dominant that it doesn't really make sense to show off some of the other decks that have been around Chimera Tech in this format too. Uh, don't worry, we will be covering a, another format soon. We're not going to jump all the way to Trooper format, which is uh, features a ton of different packs releasing and multiple ban lists going through. We're actually going to be stopping at a format that had, to my knowledge, not really been explored in a retro capacity. So that should be a lot of fun, and I'm excited to see what that brings with it. Um, if you like what you see here and want to see the follow-up video, then keep an eye on the channel, subscribe, that'll let you know when it comes out. And also, if you want to support me directly, I have a Patreon linked in the description down below. And if you join the Patreon, you get a shout-out in the video. So big shout-outs to Rincewind, Portrait Goon, Brent Donker, Geo Myfest, Dump Strike, and Tyler Compton. It means a lot that you all support me this way. I encourage you to make more videos like this in the future. I hope you enjoyed, as always. And until next time, I've been Ben from YDF from Zero, and I'm signing off.